Hey guys, it's Ben. Uh, welcome back to XTD. In the last part, we defeated the boss guy again. It's weird. They, well, then again, they did the fire wyverns in like the first hub. Onward. Onward. Alright, so. I understand that moving up is like, how do I get back onto it? Arc it up. Apparently, you don't really do any of the other th thing as. Oh, it goes up twice. <laughs> Just wade through the lava. Ah, oh, what? Oh my gosh, I'm not paying attention. But I will grab the Falcon Shield. Alright, onward. And it goes up three times. So I've got to wait for it to go up once, and then I gotta get onto it the next time. So yeah, apparently the next um, the next time you went, you've gotta you've gotta come back here after doing all the clock stuff. It does like a bunch of things apparently. You've gotta come here for the clock, uh, for the gear. Sorry. Um, so we got just a white one. I completely scrolled through the whole thing. There we go. So a door is open on the chantry. Now you gotta do the clocks, I guess, to unlock things, but you don't need to specifically get the one that's on. I see what they're playing at here. <laughs> Clear the ground! Yeah, um... So anyway, we're in the abattoir. I, I haven't really gone here before, but... A fair amount of lava. It's good for a final stage. For a final hub. I have lava! You know, one thing I wish, though, was that if there were more consistent areas. You know, like, I wish that the game had hubs that based itself more or so on areas. Like, there would be an entire hub dedicated to ice. All the levels would base itself around ice. And likewise, it'd be like a volcano where things would have lava and stuff. The problem with this game is that you just don't know when you're expecting stuff. I, I've come to I've come to love just the randomness of the level design at times. Like, for example, the random graveyard at the end of... Oh, gosh! I wasn't calling for that. The random graveyard didn't call for those guys, but okay. Um... Like a random graveyard at the end of the last hub. Or the um. I have teleported up here, apparently. Get me down. <laughs> um. Okay, so what do I do here? Not tell me I've actually done. I can't actually do anything here. Okay, good. Okay, bad. Okay, maybe. Um, yeah, like, this is a lot of randomness with the level design, like, the... Hmm, maybe I should think twice before going there. Nah, oh gosh. So I pushed the switch. The switch stayed. And that lowered that one. Okay, good. It's kind of bad though. What if you don't know that there was a thing up there? <laughs> That's a pretty cryptic way of telling the player. Also, there's a lot of those guys on the ground. I don't like these guys very much. You may think, you may know that. You may know that I don't like these guys. Also, that is death. Either that, that was a pretty deep pit that I don't think there's an exit. To. Yeah, I don't think there's an exit there. And what's the point of this? Looks well, like a cage. I don't know what that is about, but... Hey, game designers, you know? Yeah. But yeah, this is just... A, this, this is just inconsistency with level design. Um, that being said, though, I think it's still a pretty good game. It's probably one of my favorites of the Doom franchise. 
Like, of course, it's not, it's not running off Doom, but it's just like a game running off a Doom engine. This one is one of my favorites because it just takes it to a completely different experience. It's not like Heretic, where it just, um, kind of made Doom again with different weapons and different enemies and stuff. It's not like Hexus, where it did that. It's not like Str oh, Strife. Strife was different, but hey, uh, hush. Hush. You can't buy it on Steam. So, if you can't buy it on Steam, it doesn't exist. Don't know, I haven't made any games in a while, haven't they? <laughs> nah. Um. It's kind of weird how you can't buy Strife on Steam. It's just something with the public, with, with the developers. They just can't seem to get a deal. Where did that do? That just... I had crushy things in all of them. What? Okay. Oh, snap. I didn't need one for the past couple of parts, but you made me do it. Game, you made me do it. And of course, I always do it on the first go, but I always seem to try and make myself fall into the... Into the up there. Now I haven't seemed to have gotten anything from this, although I've... Oh, that switch of the... Yeah, that switch of back to it has definitely done something. Huh, so weird. You can't sap. Like, you can't do a melee attack with the thing when you're standing up next to them, so... That's kind of interesting. Also, there's the cage. The cage is still there. I was about to jump off then. Also, apparently this... See how there's like a little legend? Oh, you can go down. It's a deep pit, and I don't think there's any bet. No, there's no benefit from it, so stop that. So I would like to. Oh, yeah, I would like to get outside from here, but unless if I just open the door from here. Apparently found a thing of the way yonder. Um, Strife is a kind of interesting game. It's it's odd how you can't get it on Steam, but I, w I won't promote piracy. But <laughs> it's definitely easy to play because it's on the Doom engine. Uh, you can actually play it inside of GZ Doom, and it looks pretty nice. It's it's kind of like an RPG-ish game. I think a Deus Ex kind of RPG, if you know what I mean. Use different tools to solve things. You use currency and stuff. You follow missions, and but it plays a little bit like uh, this game. Now, as long as as long as you follow the missions, like you know, like you've, you follow exactly where they're telling you to go, then you should be able to beat the game no problem. Like, of course, you've got to challenge this thing. Also, I I played a little bit of it. It's kind of hard to learn. Not, not like what the weapons do, but it's just like how the game works. They keep telling you how to do things stealthily. Pretty much when you kill someone and everyone else is onto you. So, also, yeah, stealth in Doom. I'm just gonna ignore this, uh. I was about to say, I'm gonna ignore this level, but I don't think I can. Ah, uh, that will. Nope. I can't ignore this level. Oh, yeah, I can. Okay, so... So this just leads back to... This place. Which means I need to get back to... The place across the road there. Up we go! Woo! Okay. So I didn't get a cog from... Oh, I did! Okay, I was at the other place, okay. Dang it! So basically, that's the only place left without a cog. Now, gear. Should be calling it gear. Get your gear up. Um, bridge is being built on the abattoir. Oh, so I've got to do that in order to open. I don't know. Uh, we'll go into the other area right now. 
Uh, I think it was this one, this one on the far end. Yeah. I remember just randomly warping to this place. Um, holy snap, that's a lot of guys. I was just going, there's a lot of guys down there, so I'm going to jump up here. So there's a lot of guys up here. Here we go. Zapping gun a lot. So there's a guy in this tiny little lake. It's kind of interesting how those lake guys actually do exist. They don't just randomly pop up. They actually are guys that will pop up and try and attack you. It's intriguing how that actually works, because I, I don't even know how that works. It's, it's situational, of course. Like, I'm guessing it, it only works based on... Hey, current up. The current height level. And they basically just block them out of areas. Using height. So that... So technically, he can be put anywhere he wants. It's just that the enemy itself just goes into the height areas. So these... Oh, I was about to say, these doors on the side look awfully suspicious, but no. Nah. Dang it, I don't want to face the killer instinct. There's a lot of, I was about to say there's a lot of guys, but either that or it's a pretty short map in that sense. The other one actually seemed a bit longer. Um, I talked about Strife a little bit. Yeah, it's, it's kind of interesting. Also, it's got voice acting. The game comes with two wads. One wad, one wad comes with all the game data, and the other one comes with the voices. If you inspect them in a... Something like... I don't know. Something that inspects bots. I forgot what the thing is called. Um, you can pretty much play all these voice clips and... I don't know, they're kind of... Kind of interesting, but they basically just... Say what some of the lines are. Actually, kind of most of them. Nah, some of them. Some of them. It's intriguing, though. It's, it's probably one of the early games that had voice acting in 1990. I think it was 1996 by this time, but and actually, there was a bit of voice acting in video games by that time. But it's pretty interesting to see a game that actually goes for near full voice acting, which is weird considering a lot of games at the time didn't even have voice acting. It took so long before, like, disc games got voice acting. You know, besides games like Conker's Bad Fur Day. I don't know, it was kind of interesting. Like, was it a space concern? Why do I keep ending up on this side? I want to go through this door and get shot in the face by that guy. Woo. Um. Yeah, but like, what's the space concern? Because Conker's Bad Fur Day did a pretty good job of having tons of voice actors, despite the fact that, you know, you're limited by N64 cartridge sizes. Um... Oh, I was thinking, do I activate him like that one now? I was just thinking, hmm... So I went in here... Yeah, I was thinking that. Do I actually jump in this hole? Wow, I do. Grab the cog. Or the gear, as it's called in this country. And I should be able to get up there at some stage later. Since all the enemies are respawning, that means absolutely nothing, although I shall. Shout and obliterate them all. Other than that, though, I guess that's it, pretty much. Well, there is a portal in there. I, can't, I, I, I have no clue how to access it. There's a teleporter or something involved, but other than that, like, I don't really know exactly. So, I guess I'll finish the clock and then I'll call that part. It's kind of weird, I took on two, two maps. This part. So a stair is being built on the Dark Watch. And then I guess since we finished the Cog Puzzle, I guess we'll go back to... Sewer Land. We'll see you next time on HexDD.